Nancy Van is the president of Safe Energy Rights Group. Before becoming an environmental activist, Nancy worked for over 20 years as an attorney and served as chairwoman of a number of nonprofit organizations, including the Center for Disability, Advocacy, and Rights. She is currently the chairwoman of the Peekskill Housing Authority. Nancy received her bachelor's degree, summa cum laude, from Columbia University and received her law degree from Yale Law School, where she was the founder and first editor-in-chief of the Yale Law and Policy Review. Wow. Nancy is currently running for the Westchester County Legislator in District 1, which includes Indian Point. Wow. To learn more about Nancy's work and her campaign, go to her website at www.nancyvan.com or email her at nancy underscore V-A-N-N, nancy underscore van at hotmail.com. I actually had a friend once, an elderly man, who when I told her, told him my email had an underscore in it, he spelled out the word underscore. So really, everybody know where the underscore is? Okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Nancy underscore Van at hotmail.com. All right, Nancy Van. It's so good to be here with everybody from Clearwater because Clearwater is one of the organizations that when something needs to be done for the environment in our area, they're the ones that step up and do it. I am so happy with the result of Indian Point being ready to shut down now and whatever anybody tells you about why they're shutting down know that Clearwater was one of the folks that really pushed for that for so many years and we never would have had the success we would have now they never would have had to uh, build the additional cooling towers they never would have had to consider the river and the people and the uses of the river that don't involve killing billions of fish every year or actually uh, it's in the millions every day um, so I love I love this group I grew up sailing in Miami where I was born and spent many many happy days becalmed on Biscayne Bay but uh, the sailing up here is, is really nice because you almost always get a nice breeze like this. And we need to appreciate everything that we have. One of the things that's trying to destroy what we have that's really endangering our river today as we speak is the Spectra Pipeline. The Spectra Pipeline goes from Pennsylvania oil fracking fields under the Hudson River, right next to Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant, all the way through Westchester County and into Connecticut. After that, it goes through Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, where it joins up with another pipeline that used to bring gas down from Canada for New England, but now they reverse the flow of that. So the gas coming from Pennsylvania is only going through our areas and all the way up to Canada where it's being put on ships and exported to Europe. They can get about four times the price there and it's all their profits and our risks. And we can't, we can't allow that to happen. This pipeline is being built in three different segments. One of the segments has already been canceled because they couldn't get the public to pay for it. The public in Massachusetts uh, said no, and so the public, the other places, uh, had to go along with them. Rhode Island, which is more or less the, the state, has welcomed the pipeline and the money. Uh, but. Uh, now it, that section of the pipeline has been canceled. However, the segment called Atlantic Bridge, which gives you some idea of where it's going, the Atlantic, on boats that are going to be the bridge, that section of the pipeline is still active. It's going through Yorktown now. If you know 
uh, northern Westchester. You just go up through Peekskill and you make a right-hand turn and go east, and that's where Yorktown is. It's going through wetlands there. It's cutting down trees there. It's going across the New York City's uh, water supply, the Croton uh, water supply up there. And they're going to be building that as soon as they can start cutting trees down again, which will be the end of, no of October, at the beginning of November. They are not allowed to cut down the trees now because of the bats. And it's so ironic that they can't cut trees down because it might harm the bats during nesting season, but they can run these pipelines which leak methane. Methane that's contaminated with radon since it's from frack gas, gas fields in Pennsylvania and threaten the health and the welfare of all of us every day for probably another 40 or 50 years, which is the life expectancy of this pipeline. But it's not just this pipeline that's a problem. There's a pipeline that's going near uh, Albany, which at least at this point, the DEC, the Department of Environmental Conservation, has shut down by not allowing the water permits. It's doing a lot of stream crossings, it's doing a lot of wetlands crossings, just like Spectra, only somehow they woke up because it's going next to Albany and decided, oh well we don't need that one. <laughs> um, there's gas pipelines, there's oil pipelines, the Pilgrim pipeline is it's slated to go up next to the Hudson River too and we have to resist all of these things because one spill, one rupture next to Indian Point and the all of New York City would be subject to the radioactive fallout from Indian Point uh, because the spent fuel rod pools there are not protected the blast radius of the Spectra Algonquin pipeline is 4,000 feet. The Indian Point infrastructure, the, the switch yard, the electrical switch yard, which brings in energy to cool the towers and cool the cores, is 115 feet from the pipeline. The backup fuel for the generators is 105 feet from the pipeline. The control room for Indian Point is not in a hardened structure. It isn't subject to, you know, the same kind of, of protection that the cores are. But if the control room goes out, which it would if the pipeline ruptured, that's the end of the cooling. That's the end of... of managing all of the systems that keep Indian Point running and keeping it from from uh, having a meltdown. The radius for a meltdown, as you probably know, is 50 feet, including this spot, miles. this lovely 50 miles. <laughs> Sorry, I was feet for uh, the blast radius. 50 miles, which includes this lovely spot on the lovely river. And um, we don't want any of that to happen. But even if that doesn't happen, having these frack gas pipelines wherever they are increases the amount of fracking that's done. It increases the amount of toxins in the air. And toxins don't stay in the air. Toxins fall out of the air into our water and into our soil. But in Pennsylvania, the fracking the fracking has managed to pollute the groundwater there. People have their, their water catching on fire coming out of their, their spigots. And this is such a bad idea on so many levels that when I try and tell people about this frack gas pipeline going right next to Indian Point and 
gas pipelines rupture on average last year six times per week. It's not like, you know, we've had three or four just independent uh, nuclear power plant meltdowns. This is something that happens six times a week in the U.S. So why put it next to Indian Point? Why put it anywhere to ruin our air, our water, and the health and safety of our children? People who live near these uh, facilities suffer far more, uh, they suffer far more respiratory problems, children are born early, babies are born early, low birth weight. There's so many documented harms that come from this type of infrastructure. We have to oppose it all. And I just appreciate how much Clearwater has done in stepping up, writing, they wrote to, Clearwater wrote to FERC and ask them to stop this pipeline. They asked them to not approve the pipeline because it had to go under the Hudson. If it erupted under the Hudson, not even next to Indian Point, if it just erupted under the Hudson and brought up all the PCBs and all of the toxins that are on the riverbed there, that could destroy our beautiful river. So even if it doesn't glow in the dark from this, we have to make sure that it doesn't start bringing down all of the things that will affect the health of New York City as well as as our little communities up on the lower Hudson Valley. So thank you very much. If anybody has any questions? <laughs> questions? Uh, uh, sure. <laughs> uh, this is Berenice who is my field director. As you know, I'm running for, as Donna told you, I'm running for county legislature from the district that includes Indian Point, that includes where this pipeline goes through uh, all of Westchester. It goes through Cortland, Peekskill, and Yorktown, which just happen to be the three towns that are in my uh, district. And we want to shut down Indian Point. We want to do the decommissioning in a responsible manner. We want to make sure that the current employees are kept so that know the plant, so that they won't have to bring in new people who would have to look up in a manual. Oh, well, it says that this unit is overheating. What do I do now? Let's look in the manual. No, we want the current employees kept. We want the the spent fuel rods to be put into hardened dry cast, not just the cheap stuff that they're trying to get away with. We don't want the plant sold to a company whose only business is decommissioning plants on the cheap so that they can keep the rest of the decommissioning funds. And we want the towns to get the money for being a temporary nuclear waste storage area. That would ensure that we would have at least a little more oversight, at least a little more care from our local community on keeping the, the grounds protected. If you go past where Indian Point is and you see where the pipeline runs through, you'll see this little fence with some razor wire around Indian Point, and then it stops. And that's where the pipeline comes through. So the pipeline next to the switch yard is completely unprotected. We need to make this an important issue for the town. We need to make it an important issue for the county. My opponent, John Testa, is now suing to keep Indian Point open rather than trying to devise a plan. The forum that Mana Joe helped organize. Mana he, Mana Joe, the environmental uh, action head of Clearwater, organized a decommissioning Woo! forum. And guess who didn't come? John Testa, who, by virtue of being the district lead, the legislature from this district, District One is now on the governor's task force for decommissioning. 
we have to have someone who cares about decommissioning properly. We have to have someone who knows about decommissioning, who's been going to decommissioning forums for over two years now to learn everything I can about it. We have to have someone who at least shows up uh, as the county legislature from, from this area so that we can be on the governor's task force so we have input into what our local uh, and state and county uh, officials say and do about this really, really enormous problem that we're going to be faced with of trying to do this decommissioning right. So that's why I'm running. And um, this is Berenice, who is doing field for me, getting people going out door knocking. And if you'd like to sign up to volunteer or just to get more information from us about what's going on, if you go on our website, I'm posting things about how to decommission Indian Point. So there's some educational information there. And um, so sign up, take a flyer. And I look forward to being back here next year when we can say, we're on our way. We've gotten the governor's task force on board with doing the right thing. They are speaking up. The, our senators, Senator Gillibrand and Senator Schumer, I want them to introduce legislation to make sure that we get some money as a temporary nuclear waste storage site so that we'll have the security we need, so that we'll have the oversight we need. You know, I look forward to being able to tell you all about that stuff next year. I just okay. wanted to very, oh, just super no. quickly, um, no, just okay. say, <laughs> raise your hand if you think that Nancy should become a county legislator. Yo! Okay, yes. great. So that means if you want to help make that happen, please, please, please come and talk to me and I'll be passing out this sign-up sheet. Um, and even though you, many of you guys live down here in the city and Nancy's up in Peekskill, there are actually lots and lots of ways that you can help her get elected. So don't be discouraged by geographic distance. There's tons of stuff that you can do from afar, including organizing phone banks, including organizing fundraisers, and of course supporting her campaign. So please come and talk to me if you're interested and sign up here. And I've got information as well. And obviously this woman is amazing and we direly need her in office. So thank you all.